Welcome to part three of creating a Discord bot from scratch with slash commands. So in the last video, if you remember, we were actually able to get our Discord bot into the Discord server itself. But in this video, we're gonna make it turn online and actually be alive. Along with that, we're gonna create a command handler and event handler. And so a lot of this is kind of like the busy work, but in the next video, guys, we're gonna make our first command so that the bot is actually able to respond to a command. So this is like the last video of the setup process so let's get started so what we're gonna do is gonna go over here and click new file and we're gonna call it index index.js so this is basically gonna be your main folder of where your discord bot is gonna live all right guys with the index.js file that we just created let's get started with coding so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna type in require and then we're gonna do parentheses and we're going to type dot env and dot config so this is just basically pulling all of our variables from this dot env file so this is how we're going to access our token next we're going to want to type const fs equals require node fs just like that so basically FS just gives us access to the file system so that node can traverse your file system. And um, we're gonna create some folders that we're gonna want um, node to be able to go through. So that just gives it access to go through the files. And then we're gonna also wanna do const path equals require node path. And then there we go, just like that, we got node path. And so basically this is just going to give us access to the path to the folder. So the only time we're going to use these two things right now are in the file. So it's not really that important that you understand what they do. It's just an important that you have them there. Now we're going to extract the bot token from our ENV. So if you remember, here is our token and we called it discord token. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract it and we're going to call it discord underscore token. And then you can call it something else. I'm just going to simplify it and call it token. And so that basically what this means is it's going to take the variable from EMV discord token and we're going to rename it as the variable token. And then we're going to equal process dot env. So if you guys want something that might be helpful for you is if you go actually to extensions and type in prettier on VS code, um, you can get this prettier click install, it's gonna format your code, and then we're gonna go back to here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do then is now click control comma and type in format on save, type that in, and you'll see the editor comes up format on save. You wanna make sure this is checked. So check it if it's not already checked, Okay, there you go, guys. Now, once we have the formatter installed, what you're gonna need to do is click Control Shift P. That's right, Control Shift P. And then you can go ahead and either type or, or choose from the options Format Document. And it might, might ask you to configure your document. Click Configure and then choose Prettier, the one you just installed. Then you'll notice that once I, let's say if I get rid of this and I click, if I could click Control S right now, Boom, it adds that space there. So now everything's gonna be formatted from here on out. Now I'm gonna add comments just so this makes it easier for us to remember when we come back to it. And to add a comment, you just do two backslashes. I'm gonna say, let's require the necessary discord.js classes. So this is where we're gonna bring in all the classes from Discord that we're gonna use. So for example, we're gonna use the client which is basically used for everything. We're gonna use gateway intent bits, which gives us access to different permissions. And then we're also gonna get collections. So these are all gonna be down the line what we're gonna use um, to make different commands. And then you're gonna take this all from require discord.js and then you can save that and wow, so beautiful how it formats it. Next, we're gonna actually create a new instance, um, create a new client instance. So this is basically gonna be the, the beat of the bot. This is gonna be the heartbeat of the bot that we're, we're creating. So let's create the client. So the client member is the bot and we're gonna say new client. So we're, we're making a new instance of this class client that we got from discord.js. So in here, you're gonna wanna put a object which we're gonna tell the intents of our bot with the client. So we're gonna give it different intents. So gateway.intentsbits.guilds. So guilds are basically the servers. 
So give it access to the guild information. We're gonna give it gateway intent.bits um, guild messages. So we're gonna give it access to all of the messages that are sent in our server. We're also gonna give it access to gateway intent bits message content. So we're gonna need this to actually see what each person wrote in a channel. Let's say you're trying to read, the, you're trying to tell your bot to read a message of, that someone sent. Well, in order for it actually to understand what it wrote, it needs access to the content. So there we go. And then gateway intents.bits, this is the last one. And we're gonna do guild message reactions. Now this is going to, this is something that's going to be needed. If you want to do like something like reaction roles, if you want to be able to add a reaction, if you're going to want to be able to track reactions, you're going to need this in here. Um, again, you might not need all these depending on what you want your bot to do, but that's what we're going to do for this tutorial. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a path for all of our events. So basically one event what an event is in terms of a Discord bot is um, if something happens, like let's say someone uses a command, that is an event. And so we need a handler that's gonna handle any event that happens. So first we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and create a new folder called events. And this is where we're gonna put all of our events. And to get started, um, we can actually create our first event right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it inside the events folder and we'll call it ready.js. Here we are. And so what you're going to do is extract the events class from discord itself, um, require discord.js and you can save that. And then this is how what we're going to do for every command and every event. So what you're going to want to start off with is module.exports. So this is what we're going to be exporting outside of this file so that we can use it somewhere else. We're going to give it a name. And this is part of Discord syntax that it wants you to use. Client ready. So this is just going to be telling us when the bot is working. And we're going to only do it once. So you're going to just use this once attribute and say true. So we're on, this is only going to happen once the bot is connected to Discord. It's going to give us a message and we only want that to happen once. And then we're going to type in execute client. Execute is basically what's going to happen when this event is triggered, right? So when this event is triggered, when the events.client ready, so once Discord sees that the bot is ready, we're going to console.log. So if you don't know what that means, it's just going to log a message. It's going to send a message right here in the terminal that says, and use backticks. Backticks is so you can put variables ready, logged in as, and then you can do money sign brackets. And this is going to allow us to add client.user.tag. So this is going to get, it's this, this should say, if everything goes right, it should say ready, logged, oops, logged in as, and then it should say Dinobot because that's the, that's the user, that's the client, that's the bot tag, client.user.tag for our bot. So it should pop up in the terminal when we run it. So that's all we got to do for the ready. Let's go back to index. Now let's actually go back to our index.js and actually have it read that event file. So this is kind of like, again, something that we only have to do once. So we're gonna create something that loads the event files on startup. So remember only on startup. So const events path equals path dot join. And so this is just gonna take the directory name events so basically what this do is doing is it's taking the directory name, the path called events. And that's, as you see, what we called our folder up here, events. So it's going to go to this folder and we're going to say const event files equals fs dot read. And it's going to be read, um, read directory sync events path. So, and now it's going to basically read the contents that are inside the events folder, which is going to be our ready.js for now, but we will add more stuff to this later. And then what we can do is we can add a little filter just to make sure that every file in there is what we want. So you can just do file and this is going to implicitly return 
any file that ends with .js. So any file that has a .js after it, which is a JavaScript file, then we're going to know um, that's going to be loaded in as an event file. This this loads in all our all of our files in our events folder. So now we're going to loop through it. So for const file of event files, we're going to say const file path equals path dot join events path file. So for each file that we get from events files, we're going to get the path of the file. And then once we have the path of each specific file, then we're going to say const event equals require file path. And then if event dot once, so if you remember guys, let's go back to our ready file. We've said once equals true for our ready. If event dot once is true, then client dot once event dot name. And then we're going to take the rest of the arguments. So there might be more arguments than just the name. We don't know. And then it's going to say event dot execute man my typos and then you're going to spread all the all the rest of the arguments so basically that's saying if the event is to only run once then the client is going to only do this once which is going to take each event name it's going to spread all the rest of the arguments so for the arguments it would be like so it's going to take name events client ready and then anything else that we might add it's going to just lop that in there and it's going to execute all those arguments including this once true. Now we have to add a case. So let's say the event happens more than once. Let's say, let's say we want it to happen forever. And we're actually just going to copy this exact line below, except we're going to change this once to on. So basically what this says is while the client is on, the event is going to execute every time something happens, not just one time. All right. So there we go for the uh, the events. And we're actually going to do a very sim similar process than this for our commands. So to get started with this, let's create a new folder and we're going to call the new folder commands. So now we're actually going to do a very similar process that we did for the events files and we're going to do it for any command files that we add in here. So we're going to say load the command files on startup. So we're going to do client.commands so this is going to set commands as a new collection of commands. And that is where we're using the collections, right? So we're going to make a new collection for commands. And we are going to say const command path is equal to, again, similar to above, path.join directory name. And we're going to call that commands because that is what we call the folder commands. Then we're going to want to do a similar thing where we read the files. So command files equals fs dot read directory sync commands path. And then we're also going to do the same thing where we filter each file and we only really want to get the files that have that end with the .js. Um, hopefully this is making sense to you guys. So we're just going to take the command files that end with JavaScript. And then now that we have each one, we're going to say for const file of command files. Um, for each one, we're going to say const file path is equal to path dot join commands path file. So that's this is going to be the full path to each command file that we have in here. And then const command equals require file path. 
All right, guys, we're almost there. Um, a lot of this code is going to make much more sense once we start, but let's just write this last little piece of it. We're going to say if data in command and execute in command, then we're going to do client.commands.set command dot data dot name comma command. Then we're going to say else we're going to console.log and we'll just log this warning warning the command at file path is missing a required data or execute property and we can save that. So basically that's just going to say if it basically, if the command is not complete, it's going to give you a warning and it's just going to create a new slash command for each command that's in here. And I'll show you how to write commands a little bit later. So now we're almost done guys. And all we got to do is write client dot login. And then we're going to take our token that we took from all the way up here at the top const discord token, we're just going to go at the bottom and log into discord with the token. All right. Now, if we did everything correctly, big if, big if, if we did everything correctly, then we can actually run our code here. And in the terminal, all we got to do so Remember I talked about main, just go to package.json and make sure that your main says index.js, which is our main file that we're working in. If it says something else, this won't work. Um, but to run it, you just write node index.js. But since we have it in main, you can just do node dot and run that. And there we go. Ready, logged in as Dinobot. And then it says the, the number, the tagline for Dinobot. So now let's go to Discord. And would you look at that Dinobot is actually online. So that's pretty cool guys, but maybe that's not cool enough for you. So in the next video, that's when we're going to actually get it. So we can actually do like a slash command, like slash ping, and that will respond with Pong from the Dinobot. So if you guys are ready to actually get our commands working, start making custom commands, then follow me to the next video. And that's when we're going to get everything working. So see you guys in the next one.